Welcome to making a Stuart model steam plant. In this one, part 56, I'm testing the gas burner and changing the gas jet to a smaller size, then securing the burner to the brass holder, followed by showing the painted Stuart S50 steam engine. This is a Bix gas burner, B-I-X, and there are a brand of burners that are very popular, but they do have a bit of a problem, or at least the ones that I've used in the past have, and the problem is that they overheat and then the ceramic starts to cremate. And when this happens it's quite serious. Not only do you get a white residue everywhere, the burner also makes a roaring noise as the gas starts burning inside it. What is the solution? Well immediately you turn off the gas supply. Let it cool, then reposition the gas jet in the Venturi tube. This is a number 16 gas jet and it's far too big for this burner. Because this is a tutorial video, I'm going to fit it to this burner and see what happens. To perform this test successfully, especially setting the position of the gas jet, it's best to use a full tank of gas. This is not a full tank of gas, but it's all I've currently got. It will do for the demonstration. To light the burner, I'm using my small Proxon blowtorch, and it takes a while for the gas to get all the way down a long pipe to the burner. And as you can see, it's not exactly spectacular. And moving the position of the gas jet in the Venturi tube makes no difference. This gas jet is too big. This one should be better as it's smaller. It's a number 12. Once again using my Proxon blowtorch, I light the burner. And this time to start with, I'm getting an almost invisible bluey coloured flame. I'm moving the gas jet in and out to see what happens. When I move the gas jet outwards away from the burner, this uncovers more of the holes in the Venturi tube, lets in more air and the burner burns a lot brighter. But don't forget these Bix burners are a little bit prone to cremating. And in the instruction book it says try and aim for a lot of small triangular blue flames. Personally I find this difficult, particularly as my gas canister is almost empty. I've always found gas firing of steam boilers to be a bit problematic. I often find that the gas burners do not provide enough heat, but it's not really the fault of the gas burners, if I'm honest. As the gas evaporates inside the canister, the canister chills and the pressure drops, and it would appear that as the level of the gas in the canister drops, not as much of it is propane. So you end up with a very cold, chilled tank with a very small amount of liquid butane in the bottom of the tank and this is no good, the pressure's not high enough and you get hardly any heat at all. The original twin spirit burners for these 504 boilers really were very good indeed and they provided a lot of heat to boil the water. These things are not as good and it's a bit of a compromise. Here I'm marking a position that I think is going to be the best place for the gas jet inside the Venturi tube. In this clip, the colour of the ceramic material is a little bit bright and this could cause problems when the boiler is put on top of the burner. According to my hand test, it's giving off quite a lot of heat, but it may cremate once it's inside the boiler casing. You may be wondering why yellow flames are appearing. This is nothing to do with the burner, this is me. I'm blocking up the air holes just to see what happens. When I blocked up too many of the holes in the Venturi tube, the fire went out, so here I'm relighting it. As I mentioned earlier, I'm only really making sure that the burner works and seeing whether a number 12 jet works with it because the ones that you get with these are number 10s and I find them just a little bit feeble. Very soon I'll be doing a 504 boiler test with the boiler mounted on its base with the burner inside and I'll have some water in the boiler and I'll probably run the engines on the bench. The bolts that hold the burner mounting onto the base plate are too long, and here's a top tip for shortening them. This tip only really applies to small bolts, you can't do it with substantially larger ones because, well, you just can't. All I do is get a pair of pliers and snap off the threaded end that sticks out from the nut. And the good news is, generally, they snap off quite clean. It's much better than using a pair of side cutters. Plus, you can't always get side cutters into the place where the bolts are. I must admit, this principle works best on brass bolts up to around 4BA. 
The ends of the bolts are a bit rough, so I'm going to clean them up with a needle file. This is taking far too long, and it's quite difficult to get the needle file into the right position for the bolts that are inside the holder. Maybe I could use a bigger file, but I have a better idea. Prox on to the rescue. These are some sanding discs that were kindly sent to me by someone a while back, and they're used in the dental industry. I can't see them being used for working on teeth while the teeth are still in the head of a person. I think they're possibly for working on dentures. The next job is to drill some small holes, tapping size for 6BA, in the side of the brass holder that supports the burner. But don't do it this way, because what's going to happen is, well, as you can see, the drill's wandering all over the place, and you'll make a mess of it, and they'll be in the wrong place. The best way to do this job is to remove the brass mounting bracket from the steel plate, Mark out the positions for the holes, and then drill it in a drilling machine. I removed the burner support from the steel plate. And after drilling the four holes, I threaded them 6BA. I remounted the burner support to the steel plate, and then I fitted four 6BA grub screws, as you can see here. As I tighten the four grub screws, they bite into the burner and hold it in place. And that's about it for this episode. Here's the engine as I painted the bottom black part. As you can see, the black line isn't perfect, but then when I repainted the green part, it looked like this, which is a lot better and more than adequate for the job. I'm getting very close to mounting these components on the board. But that's it for this episode. As always, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.